Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Time Stretcher node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And what the Time Stretcher node allows you to do is we went over the Time Speed node yesterday and you couldn't really animate the speed of your clips. The Time Stretcher allows you to create keyframes to animate the speed and it gives you full spline control over that. So you can do ramping up, ramping down. Now, before we jump into the node, if if you need to just add a simple retime and nothing else, you don't have additional stuff, you're only adding to your footage, your best bet, honestly, is to just use it in the edit screen. So, meaning we can uh, turn on our retime stuff. And, uh, let's go ahead and at a speed point, we'll add another speed point, we can bring this down and let's go ahead and add a curve so we can change up our curve. Let's uh, speed this up more. So now we've got a, just a regular old speed ramp going. Now, if this is all you're doing, I would just do it here in the edit screen. But if you have additional stuff, mind you, if we go to fusion, if you notice that speed ramp doesn't transfer over to fusion. So this is our original clip. So you're not gonna be able to edit your speed in the uh, edit tab and then come into fusion do additional graphics to match that speed so let's go back to our edit screen and let's get rid of this and jump back into fusion so this is what the time stretcher node is for. So within Fusion, we can stretch our time. And to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and add a, uh, a merge. Let's grab some text. And let's just write, I don't know, dance. Let's up our size a little bit and just make this black. And let's animate it. So we got a little animation. So I'm gonna back it up and we'll bring it in right before she starts turning. Let me go ahead and uh, keyframe that. Right there. Bring it in and she turns. Animate our Y. Let's do minus 360. And we'll keyframe our location. And then we'll bring it out. There, nice and simple. So now we've got this animation going. <laughs> I didn't want it to spin there. Let's uh, change our rotation to zero. There we go. And it spins and goes out. There we go. All right. So now we want to retime all this. So we're going to bring in a T-I-M-E stretcher and put it into our footage. Let's zoom in to see what's going on. So if you notice, nothing is playing. So how the time stretcher operates is instead of actual time percentage in a consistent play, our source time needs to be animated. And if you notice, our first frame automatically inputs a keyframe of zero. So unless we add another keyframe, nothing's going to happen. If we play it, it's just going to stay on frame zero. So if we say go to frame 60, 
and we want that to be at frame 12. Now, if we go back and play, it's in slow motion, playing up to frame 12 where we told it. And if we wanted to go out normal at the end, we would just go out. Now, when you're doing this, the best thing to do is to have a double, double up. That way you can, uh, we'll stick this one in here. We'll stick our original media in this one so we can kind of uh, see what's going on with our footage. So that way on our timeline, we can see where our original footage was and we can also see where we moved it to. So after this, we want it to speed up to there. So that would be frame 228. So after frame 60, we're gonna go up to 228. So we're gonna add 228. And now if we play it back, our new keyframes key will speed up and then stop. <laughs> and if we want our original footage to play out, we can go to frame 477, which is our end, play it out. So it's going to speed up and then play out. Now, before I dive a little further into this source time, on the keyframe stretcher itself, we've got our interpolation modes, and this is the same as yesterday. So if I bring this in, you can see our uh, dance here. Look at our letters. It's skipping frames to get to that next frame. So if I have it on nearest, as we play through, you notice there's a couple frames where it's just sitting because all it's doing is skipping those frames on nearest. If we use blend, it's going to blend those frames together. So, and as a reminder, if we have it set to zero, let's find a keyframe where it's dropping frames or adding additional frames. If we have a sample spread set to zero, it's not going to blend at all. If we have it set to 0.5 or 50%, that means 50% of the previous frame, 50% of the next frame, but none of the current frame are going to display. And you can see that we can see two little E's going on there. And if I drop it down, we only see one. And as I raise it, you can see all three of those frames, the previous, the current and the next. So however you want that look to look is what this sample spread is doing for you for those drop frames or added frames. So now that we've got our look, we can come in here and play with our keyframes. So if we sped it up, we can actually go from here and have it pause. So let's go here pause at 228 again. So as we play, it's actually pausing that. And then let's go to the end and actually, instead of going to the end of our footage, we're going to go back to frame zero. So it all plays in reverse. So that's how you add keyframes into the time stretcher using your actual frame of where you want it to be at any specific time. And it doesn't matter what you add. We can go to frame zero and then go a few frames up and we can change this keyframe to be the very last keyframe 477 and it'll play the entire footage in like six frames. So super fast, it's just dropping keyframes to get there. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that keyframe. 
Now, in order to be able to edit your splines for this animation, because right now they're all just linear. If we go up top here, we have this spline button. So if I select this spline and open it up, you're going to have all the different layers within our fusion. So if I just select our time stretcher source, you can see now we have all those keyframes. And uh, let me go ahead and fit these in. So if we want to say ramp up this first keyframe back here, we can select that keyframe. We can right click and you can either hit ease in, ease out, or you can hit smooth and it'll smooth that out. So now we can manipulate our little B splines here to uh, change that smoothness. And if we hold control, we can move just one. So we can animate our splines however we want. And if we need to animate our next one, we can just select it and animate it however we want. So now if we play it back, and clearly we went below zero over here. So let's fix the spline. And on top of your spline, we'll go ahead and close that. We can also animate our sample spread. So if we want to start out with, uh, say, zero, go to our next keyframe, keyframe that, go to our next one, crank that up to five, go to our next one, and change that back down to zero. So even when it's paused, we're gonna get a little uh, animation in there. Go to our next one and we can crank that up to five. So now, we've got some weird crazy animation going on. <laughs> the time stretcher node. Tomorrow, we will jump back into uh, the flow portion of this and the time speed node when we go over the optical flow node. So I will see you in the next node breakdown.